Willkommen, meine Freunde, to the latest installment in our ever-shifting review of the music of each decade. This one, a multi-part countdown-style survey of my top 200 songs of the decade of the 1950s. Just my opinion, folks. Feel free and welcome to express your own in the comment. Plus a look at a smattering of the top albums from the period. Why the change in format? Well, because due to technological, economic, market-driven and demographic changes, the music industry made a quantum leap in size and scope from the 1940s. I believe the biggest single factors in this were the awesome purchasing power of the American teenager, combined with an improvement in the general economic situation of African Americans. In fact, disposable income, a concept unheard of for 20 years, had reared its glorious head in the 1950s and become a dizzyingly diverse soundtrack to the triumph of aspirational capitalism and the erosion of some of the bastions of American Puritanism. And it was also the decade where American music truly went global, particularly with rock and roll establishing a foothold in Europe, Australia and the UK. And the record industry, with its new technologies, had the means to supply the demand in both recording, storing, distributing and reproducing sounds to a heretofore unimagined quality. It was also, unfortunately, the era of the great man narrative, where the story of music seemed to be told simply by its lustrous stars, and many names who made excellent or just plain weird records were shunted aside, hence the need for a 200. I hope in some way this list thereby offers some redress. So, get your cat clothes on, chase the reds from under your beds, and take a walk down Lonely Street to part one of the best of the 1950s. Stonewall Jackson gets us underway with his only top 40 hit from 1959, Waterloo. Nat King Cole stands imperiously at the corner of R&B, jazz and pop with the dynamic orange-coloured sky. One of my peculiar peccadillos is madcap rockabilly and Roddy Jackson's Moose on the Loose is way out there. A trio of beatniks next. Slim Galliard, the Vootus cat for many a bright with potato chips. Followed by a schoolhouse rock creator Bob Doro, who flips and blips with Dog, Miles Davis once described his music as being silly. And the master of satire, Tom Lehrer, goes poisoning pigeons in the park. Hey, hey, it's Bobby Day with his beloved Rock and Robin from 1958, in at 194. 193 is little-known country singer Ray Anderson with his rather hilarious Stalin Kick the Bucket, a celebration from 1953. And at 192, Renato Carsone with Tuvofol Americano, So You Want to Be an American rock and roll Italian style. One of the curious things about this list is how underrepresented doo-wop is. Benny Zeppa's A Foolish Fool is one of only two examples of this archetypal 50s music we'll encounter. At 190, Johnny Horton gets in on the space race with the electrified donkey. Horton was the second man to make a widow out of Billy Jean Jones. Who was the first? 189 introduced the king of Zydeco, Clifton Chenier, with his rockin' The Big Wheel from 1957. The Crewnecks, school kids from Pennsylvania, had two big hits and Rock and Zombie was the second of them. One of the hardest things to do in compiling this was not listing swathes of great Jamaican music. The 60s will make up for that. In the meantime, enjoy the plaintive <laughs> Boogoo Yaga Gal. 186 is an absolutely anarchic rockabilly with Dwight Pullen's sunglasses after dark, an insane record made by perhaps the coolest rockabilly cat of them all. Number 185 is two of the legends of country music having a hoedown as Ernest Tubb and Red Foley taunt each other in Too Old to Cut the Mustard. 
A familiar face from the 40s and one of the most to be seen faces of the 50s, Fats Domino makes his first appearance with the rollicking Hela Ba Boogie. Fats music is synonymous with joy and for me he's probably my favourite of the founding fathers of rock and roll. Number 183 is one of the sadder cases on show here, Little Willie John with his crack me my nerves. Best summed up as a violent drunk, inveterate criminal and brilliant singer, John died in prison in 1968, convicted of manslaughter. 182 sees the rambunctious Big Joe Turner bring his boogie woogie country girl. Bob Dylan did a great cover of this. Next up we get some authentic son rockabilly with the original Mean Eyed Cat by the one and only Johnny Cash. At 180 is Chuck Berry, the master poet of American aspirationism, with his groovy back in the USA. Legend has it that Marvin Gaye is one of the backup singers on this. Jack Jones, all warm voiced, swinging and cocky, makes a list with this could be the start of something big. And it was the start of something big, being his first hit in a career that lasted many years. At 178, the genius brother Ray Charles brings his salty and soulful self to get on the right track, baby. One of the gospel charged hits he spun out so effortlessly for Atlantic in the 1950s. And at 177 is The Fireflies, with a record that I can totally imagine Iggy Pop having sung on on one of those first two Stooges albums. Stella's Got a Fella, a bad trip nine years before LSD actually became illegal. Archie Shibley, not unsurprisingly from Arkansas, had his one shot at the big time with possibly the first Hot Rod hit, Hot Rod Race, which most rock fans know as Commander Cody's Hot Rod Lincoln. Our first lady appears on the list, Camille Howard, a whirling dervish of a boogie-woogie piano player who makes one of those rock and roll records before rock and roll was even a thing, with Ferocious Boogie. Lefty Frizzell, whom some people think is the greatest country singer of all time, romps and stomps into number 174 with your humbugging me. This is pretty great, but Lefty would do so much better. At 173, we have Nina Simone at perhaps her most approachable with My Baby Just Cares For Me. Simone's battles with bipolar disorder made her a genuinely scary person, but when she was focused by the music, she was unbeatable. Next up is Veretta Dillard with the problematic Mercy Mr. Percy. How a line like, I don't care if you hit me as long as you don't quit me, would go down today would be interesting to see. The superb Johnny Mathis makes his first appearance on this list with a ludicrously romantic, it's not for me to say, from his miracle year of 1957 in which he ruled all. TRB number 16 tells that story. Number 170 has Dean Martin bringing his special brand of smooth to the fun and off kilter in the cool, cool, cool of the evening. The woman that built Atlantic Records, Ruth Brown, is in superb form on This Little Girl's Gone A Rockin' and rock she indeed does. 168 is a prime slab of insano rock and roll as Sax Kari goes completely bonkers on Chocolate Fizz. Veteran jazzbo Coleman Hawkins checks in at 167 with an early example of a hard bop style jazz with distinct R&B elements on Groovin'. In 1958, Carl Perkins left Sun Records for Columbia and cut his debut Pink Pedal Pushers, but the B-side Jive After Five is what makes our list. Still pure rockabilly, but huge sounding, bigger than Sun could ever manage. 165 is Shaboom. It's a song which at one time was boosted as being the first rock and roll record, but nowadays is seen more as a pleasant doo-wop bopper. Next up it's Elvis at his hip swivelly, hair floppingly, sneer sneeringly best with Jailhouse Rock, a song which is in no way an encomium to elicit sodomy. Bye Bye Love, the first of 13 top 10 hits for the tremendously influential Everly Brothers, whose voice can be heard in just about every group that tried two-part harmonies from the 60s to the 80s, deservedly joins our happy band at 163. Old Leather Lungs Frankie Lane had a career lasting 75 years and prior to Elvis arriving at RCA the highest paying contract in the business. Here his biggest hit Jezebel from 1951 hits at number 162. Jimmy McCracklin's The Georgia Slop, another completely madcap slab of rock and roll, R&B, boogie woogie, whatever you want to call it, is guaranteed to keep him dancing at number 161. Speaking of crazy, there's always the usually quite mellow Joe Stafford's Hawaiian War chant. Jeez. And at number 159 is just what it says on the tin, a little duet for Chet Baker and Zoot Sims, in which trumpet and tenor skylark delightfully. Irma Thomas, one of New Orleans' very finest, sounds a salutary warning in her debut single, Don't Mess With My Man. Irma is still with us, still going strong. I saw her about 10 years ago and it was mind-blowing. 
Crazy Alligator by Irving Russ is in at 157. Manic Swamp Rock at its most manic and swampy. One of the finest albums of 1959, Mingus Aham, check out TRB42, gives us the frantic and frenetic boogie stop shuffle, a tantalising glimpse at his scattergun talents. It's New Orleans time again as Clarence Frogman Henry tells us about the lady with the hat box from 1957. Clifford Brown, the man Miles Davis said was the best trumpeter he'd ever heard, graces us with easy living. Brown sadly died in a car wreck in 1956, his potential wretchedly unfulfilled. Susie Q, Dale Hawkins' Swamper Billy Anthem holds down at 153, with all-time guitar Hall of Famer James Burton announcing his presence. One of the great tenor men, Dexter Gordon, weighs in with his version of Charlie Parker's naughty little earworm confirmation at number 152. Gordon is, by the way, the godfather of Lars Ulrich of Metallica. Great gospel next with the famous Dixie Hummingbirds and the Christian's automobile. The only automobile owner I can recall from the Bible was Joshua, who owned a motorcycle, a triumph that was renowned throughout the land. <coughs> At 150, a legendary Australian record, perhaps the most legendary, Slim Dusty's Pub With No Beer, which was the biggest selling Australian record of all time until 1968 and was the foundation of the Australian record industry. Johnny Cash's skeletal 1955 debut single, Cry, 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 is up next. It remained the template for Cash's music for almost 50 years. Little Richard's last top 10 single, Good Golly Miss Molly, rocks the house down at number 148. Little Walter is the only man in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame solely as a harmonica player, and it's songs like Crazy Mixed Up World that got him there. A genuine New Orleans legend, Louis Prima, adorns our list with the cheery Enjoy Yourself, famously covered by Prince Buster. Another inveterate spreader of joy, Prima is probably best remembered for his portrayal of King Louis in Disney's The Jungle Book. Martin Denny's mysterious Quiet Village hangs heavy in the air at number 145, while Perez Prado's Mumbo No. 8 mambulates immediately thereafter. Screamin' Jay Hawkins brightens our day at 143 with his manic, rocking and decidedly odd little demon. The B-side of I Put a Spell on You. It's that swingin' cat Ray Charles at it again with his jazzy, R&B-ish and totally groovy rock house. Ray really could do it all in the 50s. One of the most instantly recognisable songs from the 50s, Henry Mancini's Peter Gunn theme, the original and the best right here, crushes the Blues Brothers version. Jimmy Martin, ornery cuss he was, was not so much sacked from the Grand Old Opry as he was never invited to join. So mean was his reputation. As a member of Bill Munro's band, the clashes between his volatile personality and Munro's stern, stubborn temperament was the stuff of legends, as was his high tenor behind Munro's warm, light baritone, the key to bluesgrass's high, lonesome sound. At 139, it's Big Joe Turner with Flip Flop and Fly, one of the rockingest things you're ever going to hear. And 138, and it's Eddie Cochran with Come On Everybody. My mother saw Eddie Cochran with Little Richard and Gene Vincent at the Brisbane Stadium in 1957. This was the gig before Little Richard threw all his jewellery into the Hunter River and decided he was going to retire from rock and roll. Powerhouse blues man Otis Rush checks in with all your love. Ripped off, stuck on bankrupt labels and ignored when he finally signed for the majors, Rush should have been as well known as his good friend Buddy Guy. In a final insult, all his material appears lost in the UMG fire of 2008. Sassy Edith Piaf flies the tricolour with her brassy and sexy The Man on the Motorcycle, cementing her place as the bellwether of French popular culture. Number 135 is Ella Fitzgerald opening her legendary Cole Porter songbook for Let's Do It. The famous opening line, birds do it, bees do it, etc., was actually rewritten by a staffer at CBS Radio because Porter's original lyrics were too racist, even for the 1930s. But many artists, including Billie Holiday, recorded the original lyrics. At number 134, one of the unsung heroes of rock and roll, Eugene Church, who gives the excellent gospel-fired good news. He should have been a bigger star. He was a really talented singer. Once again, it's the irrepressible Fats Domino with his bouncy smooch fest, Whole Lot of Love, 
Pap Happy. 1957 calling as Gene Ammon swings by with his Titan funky king size, as much an R&B sax workout as a jazz piece. 131 gives us the tragic and crippled Gene Vincent with his blue caps with B.I. Bicky Bye Bo Bo Go. Vincent is great and all, but despite making several overlooked classic singles, real fame never came to him and he died a drunk trying to fend off constant pain at the age of 36 in 1969. Another hot guitarist, but altogether more horrible person, was Ike Turner, whose Ho Ho from 1959 stands at 130. And country's lovable sad sack, Eddie Nowak, makes an appearance with his tale of woe, Take It Away Lucky, which always brings a smirk of schadenfreude. Jimmy Reed's simplistic approach made him the biggest selling blues man of the 50s and 60s, and his biggest hit, Ain't That Loving You Baby, represents. The stories that could be told about Jimmy Reed are legend and numerous. One day I'll tell them. The pride of Steubenville, Ohio, Dean Martin is back with his delightful earworm Manana, a favourite of learner ukulele players since 1954. Country music's greatest hitmaker George Jones makes his first appearance on the list with the much-covered Colour of the Blues, a song Jones wrote himself. At 125, it's Bo Diddley. Bo had so many hits, they couldn't all make this list, but Diddy Why Diddy shows there was more to him than just a ham bone beat. B.B. King made great record on great record in the 1950s, but few of them were as bold and as exciting as the often anthologized You Upset Me Baby. 123 is the sister who knew the pews of the church and the bandstand of the nightclub, the Winona card demanding her ding dong daddy. Sure hope she found him. One of the most colourful characters, not just from New Orleans, but American music as a whole, is champion Jack Dupre, repped here with his proto rock and roll shim sham shimmy. The champ will have an episode to himself one day soon. Number 121 is Charlie Walker. It remains a travesty that Charlie is in the Country Music Hall of Fame and records like the future Buck Owens staple Pick Me Up On Your Way Down testify to this. What more can be said about Bill Haley, a man whose music and style was sadly out of date within 12 months of him opening the floodgates and to whom later critics have been too unfairly dismissive. His version here of Shake, Rattle and Roll was a massive hit that actually predated Rock Around the Clock. The doyen of New Orleans piano players, Professor Longhair, brings his great Mardi Gras anthem to 119. Anglophiles will recognise this as the theme music to Hugh Laurie and Stephen Fry's A Bit of Fry and Laurie. Buddy Holly rocks the house down with Oh Boy. Given my druthers, there'd be a dozen Buddy Holly songs on this list, but fairness to all must prevail. John Lee Hooker's Scary Tupelo from 1959 looms at number 117. Elvis's reaction to this take on his birth taste goes unrecorded. 116 is a genuinely great rock and roll singer, Cliff Richard, with one of his last pure rock and roll hits before going into pop rock in the 1960s, Dynamite. 1959's I'll Take Care of You by Bobby Bland typifies this underrated soul singer's smooth baritone. While Charlie Parker is back with The Song Is You, which combines nicely the formal conventions of the pop standard with his any point of departure soloing style. In 1956, Harry Belafonte's Calypso album was the first 12-inch disc to sell a million copies. Many years later, of course, Winona Ryder made this song her own in an altogether different manner. Elvis Presley's 1954-55 Sun Sessions were seen as a crucial jumping-off point for rock and roll and rockabilly. Whatever it may be, it's an outstanding collection of fresh and vibrant music, including the hopped-up version of a Bill Munro classic, Blue Moon of Kentucky. One of the best known of Honky Tonk hits, The Wild Side of Life by Hank Thompson, sits forlornly at number 111. Bill Evans' Peace Piece is in at 110, a delicate, wistful work which serves as a form of template for the next year's Blue in Green on Miles Davis's Kind of Blue. Speaking of Miles, his big comeback record, Round About Midnight, is at 109. His great quintet records in Columbus Studio B for the first time. Chuck Berry's debut, Maybelline, heralds the arrival of a prophet of American freedom. A thrilling electric rush from Go To Woe, released fully six months before Elvis's RCA debut, it is one of the records that legitimised and actualised the rock and roll form. From his 1956 album, Brilliant Corners, Thelonious Monk shows us his greatest gift, the ability to make complex musical moves sound appealing on Bemsha Swing. At 106, Howlin' Wolf asked for water and got gasoline. 
No wonder it was upset with gas prices what they are today. Sporting probably the most famous opening line in all post-war music, Carl Perkins's blue suede shoes sits at 105. Perhaps a touch low for a record of its seminal importance and eminence. Fairly quaking with menace, muddy water snarls and thunders Manish Boy at number 104. Almost the diametric opposite of that record is Johnny Mathis's debut, Chances Are. Timeless pop, timeless smooth pop from one of the greatest voices there's ever been. Compare and contrast with Bill Evans at number 110. 102 is Miles Davis with Evans on piano on the diaphanous blue and green, the emotional centerpiece of 1959's masterpiece, Kind of Blue. Now at 101, put on your wig hat, duck back in the alley and send the miseries packing, because Little Richard is in the house with his epical long tall Sally. 